Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. I am so excited to share this episode with you again. This week, we have a replay of one of our most listened to episodes, the episode where I call BS on imposter syndrome. Join me to learn how you can kick imposter syndrome to the curb and just advance. Let me know what you think. Hi, and welcome back to the Advancement Spot podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your day to spend some here with me. Today, we're going to talk about imposter syndrome, a term that has become more commonplace over the past few years and is really used quite often. Imposter syndrome has been described as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. Many who experience feelings associated with imposter syndrome, question whether they're actually deserving of accolades and accomplishments, including whether they belong in a certain situation or role. Imposter syndrome can be associated with feelings of not belonging, of feeling like an outsider, and it can also be associated with denying your own ability and your own denial of your own ability. It can be associated with the fear of failure, And imposter syndrome may also be associated with feeling as if you've deceived others to believe that you belong in your position. For example, does the admissions committee know that they let me in? You may also believe that you are in your position as a result of sheer luck, not your hard work, and hoping that no one finds out that you've been let in or that you've been given the job because you perceive that your experience and what you bring to the table may not be enough. Imposter syndrome disproportionately affects high-achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishments and who often compare themselves to other people. There may also be feelings of fear and guilt that are associated with success. So once you get to that position that you've coveted for so long, you may have feelings of fear in that role because you've actually achieved that goal and you don't know what's on the other side. Up until this point, all you've been working towards is that goal, but you may not have thought about what's on the other side of it, fear of the unknown. And imposter syndrome can be accompanied by feelings of anxiety, stress, insecurity, and more. And these feelings can rear their ugly heads when you, for example, find yourself in a program where all around you are other high-achieving, equally deserving peers, where maybe you haven't yet developed the skills that you'll need in your journey, and you question whether you're capable. You start to look around the room and compare yourself to others and think that others must have something or know something that you don't. Maybe you find yourself in a new job that you haven't yet developed the skills to master, but here you are in your new office with a pile of files in front of you that you have to get through and people's lives and well-being are on the line. So your work matters. Ultimately, I have a completely different perception of what causes imposter syndrome, a term I hate by the way. Why do I hate the term? I hate the term imposter syndrome for a few reasons. First, and maybe this is my academic research and analysis side talking, it's not a diagnosis. It's not actually a syndrome. And I know, don't take the terminology so seriously, Adrian, but I think it's really important to consider the effect that terminology has on people, how people think of and consider themselves, and how people relate to others. Now, I don't use the term imposter syndrome, but I've heard peers and clients use the term to describe themselves. I have imposter syndrome. As if something is wrong with them, as if they are not normal. And they label themselves, and that can be damaging to your mental health, your well-being, your sense of self-worth, and self-esteem, both personally and professionally. There's a reason that, quote, imposter syndrome is associated with feelings of anxiety and insecurity, among others. 
I also think that imposter syndrome is relative, as in, in order to label yourself as someone with imposter syndrome, you are inevitably comparing yourself to others, thinking they have something that I don't, or they know something that I don't. Rather than embracing yourself, your abilities, and that you worked hard and deserve to be here. Remember, how you label yourself, how you think of yourself matters. And it matters because when you think about yourself in a certain way, you open the door to allowing others to think that way about you too. So how we consider ourselves is extremely important. And the labels that we use to describe ourselves are extremely important. Second, using the term imposter syndrome masks some really important stuff going on on the inside. Ultimately, these feelings of inadequacy are rooted in discomfort. Discomfort in not knowing or being unfamiliar with your circumstance. Discomfort in the challenges and struggles associated with learning new things and new skills. Ultimately, I think that what has been labeled as imposter syndrome in the way that it is so commonly used is actually a sense of discomfort that hasn't been properly or accurately identified. Discomfort in periods of growth. I'll say that again. What I think has been labeled so commonly as imposter syndrome is actually discomfort in periods of growth. Just think about that for a second. Discomfort in periods of growth. Have you ever labeled yourself as having, quote, imposter syndrome? If you answered yes, which many of us, if not all of us, may have, think about how that label caused you to feel. Discouraged? Fearful? Competitive? Insecure? I know from hearing my students or clients describe that they feel this way, that this has held them back. We have to chip away at this self-perceived, self-affixed label in order to get back to the foundations of who we are to allow for that growth, growth through the discomfort. And I also know that discomfort is uncomfortable. And I've seen my peers at every stage that I've gone through try to bottle up that discomfort, shove it down, or use unhealthy methods of trying to get that discomfort to just go away. But here's the thing. We need that discomfort to grow. We need to embrace it to push us to the next level. If that discomfort weren't there, we would stay stationary, complacent, static, stuck. It's that discomfort that allows us to advance. And identifying it, identifying that discomfort, is what allows you to advance strategically because it forces you to actually think about what you want, what you're doing, and how you're doing it. Listen, I've been uncomfortable too, and sometimes still am. I think that it has been helpful to me that while I felt feelings of discomfort in periods of growth, I actually wasn't aware of the term imposter syndrome. So maybe it's for that reason that I have such qualms with the term, because I've been able to see a shift in the effect that it has on people when they use it and the way that they think about themselves. And I think that not knowing the term existed helped me to identify discomfort in periods of growth much sooner than I may have otherwise. Rather than having labeled myself, I was able to identify and still am able to identify that discomfort means that I'm actually growing, that something bigger than I realize is happening, that growth never stops. So to identify that discomfort and work through it to come out on the other side with more wisdom, more empathy, more compassion, more understanding, more knowledge, more skill, more unique ability, and more advancement. The first time I heard the term was in law school, so I hadn't realized that this term had been written about back in 1978 to describe self-perceived feelings of intellectual phoniness, and it is used much more commonly today. In fact, I heard the term used quite a lot in law school, and now I hear it used quite a lot more, and I've seen that labeling ourselves as having, quote, imposter syndrome has had significant and detrimental effects on the way that people think about themselves and their abilities. Because you've got great abilities, you have amazing experiences, and you have great skills and great perspectives to bring to the table. So don't discount all of that by labeling yourself or perceiving yourself as being an imposter, as being a fraud in your role. 
You're not. You worked hard to be here. So just remember that. Remember all of the late nights that you spent. Remember all of the certifications or diplomas or degrees or whatever it is. Remember all the internships, the co-ops, your volunteer work, anything that you've done to help you get to this point that has made you who you are today. You deserve to be where you are and you deserve more advancement. I've also seen imposter syndrome to be associated with feelings of fear and guilt that are associated with success. What will success be like? The fear of achieving that success. And I've seen people afraid to actually achieve their goals for fear of what's on the other side, because what's on the other side is unknown and the unknown can be scary. But I came to realize that the unknown is actually something to appreciate. In our society here in Ontario, the unknown doesn't have to be scary. It's filled with opportunity just for you opportunity that is waiting for each one of us. And with a growth mindset rather than a scarcity mindset, we begin to realize that everyone has a path that is waiting just for them. Successes that are waiting just for them. Opportunities that are waiting just for them and just for you too. There is more than enough opportunity to go around. So why waste your shot? On the other side is growth, growth, and more growth your growth, your advancement, and it will never stop. It only stops when you do and when you stop believing in yourself and your abilities. This doesn't mean that you'll never be uncomfortable again, but the way that you perceive that discomfort is the real game changer. How do you identify that discomfort and what do you do with it? Do you label it as imposter syndrome and start to feel bad, start to have feelings of anxiety and insecurity? start to have increased feelings of competition with those around you? Or do you perceive the discomfort as opportunity for growth and a guide for your strategic growth? How do you identify that discomfort and what do you do with it? That's the real game changer. And guess what? You also learn more about yourself, your values, and your worth when you lean into that discomfort and you let it guide you. So how do we overcome this so-called imposter syndrome? And I really do hate this term. By first identifying perception, mindful perception of that discomfort. Maybe it's because as a professor, I have a front row seat to the effort and growth that my students experience. Maybe it's because I was a professor while I was a student in law school And I was able to experience my teaching, student engagement, and my own effort as a student in a completely unique way. Maybe it's because as an advancement coach and strategist, I see how hard my clients work to achieve and surpass their potential, to get those promotions, transition careers when they felt stuck, and to get into those graduate and professional schools that they never thought they could get into. Maybe it's because as a lawyer, I see that my work helps families navigate tough healthcare situations. My work helps my clients build successful businesses and not or, but and maybe it's because I continue to advance both personally and professionally. And I realize that everyone is constantly figuring it out. When I was younger, I used to see people who were older than I was and think, man, they've got it figured out. And when I'm that old, however old that is, I'll have it figured out too. But then I got there, wherever that was. I reached the top of that figurative mountain a few times. Maybe it was my PhD. Maybe it was my call to the bar and officially becoming a lawyer. And then maybe it was opening my own practice. And then maybe it was opening my own brick and mortar office while also running my businesses virtually. When I was younger, I thought I want a storefront and to run businesses. And I thought, oh, by then I'll have it all figured out. And now here I am. Do I have it all figured out? No. Am I embarrassed to admit that? No, because everyone is figuring it out. Do I have it more figured out than before? For sure. But there are always new things, new opportunities, new areas for growth. Maybe it's my continued understanding that advancement is never done. That once you reach a big goal, you stop and think, well, now what? You've been working towards that goal. Everything that you've done is working towards that goal. And then you've achieved it, but you never thought about what's on the other side. I've been there. 
I was 25, almost 26 when I finished my PhD. 29, I was a lawyer. These big milestone moments and your life is just beginning. Maybe it's my continued reflection and understanding that I'm the one that students look up to as a professor, as a researcher, as a mentor. I'm the one that my clients rely on for support, coaching, strategy, and solutions. We're all figuring it out one next best step at a time. Not an imposter, just me figuring it out mindfully, thoughtfully, and presently with an eye to the future and with lessons learned from the past. So how can you make it through the discomfort? How can you work through it and come out stronger on the other side? Here's what I do. If I'm ever feeling overwhelmed or uncomfortable, I ask myself, what is my next best step? I don't need to have all of the answers. I don't even need to know every single step of the journey. I just need to keep mindful of my goal and think to myself, what is my next best step right now? And sometimes your next best step is doing something, making a choice in order to take some action. And in other cases, your next best step may be your choice to not take an action. I use visualization to envision what it will be like to succeed. For example, walking across that stage at my master's or PhD or law school convocations, wearing that regalia, the academic regalia that is so symbolic of all of the work that you've put in. Imagining failure is just not part of the equation. Because when you imagine things, when you visualize things, when you visualize things happening, you're making connections in your brain. So you want to strengthen the connections, visualizing success and what that will look like for you and not imagining failure. Failure cannot be part of the equation. You have to train your mind to think in a way that serves you and your growth. And the words I can't or it's too hard are simply just not part of my vocabulary. Instead, I ask, how can I do this? How can I get there? How can I develop those skills? What is my next best step? I think a great example of this is going through law school when work or exams were stressful. I would approach my classes in a way that I ensured that I learned as much as I possibly could by adopting the mindset that I was here to learn what I needed to do to serve my clients. So what could I learn that would best prepare me for them not to get an A? Once I began to think like that, This mindset allowed me to openly learn and appreciate various perspectives. I didn't feel in competition with my peers, even with a steep grading curve. The stress of that curve melted away and I could engage with my peers and my friends without the stress associated with the scarcity mindset, one created by the socially constructed competition and stress. Back during my law school orientation at Osgoode, then Dean Lauren Sawson, Now, Justice Sawson of the Ontario Superior Court in Toronto said, look to the left, now look to the right. I could have sworn that he was going to say, one of you may not be here next year. But instead, he said, look to the left, now look to the right. Beside you may be sitting a future judge. I thought that was a really important and supportive way of starting off our law school journey. It was so constructive, so meaningfully supportive, and encouraged a growth mindset rather than a scarcity mindset, which runs in complete alignment with how we view others as your peers, not your competition. Competition feeds into the scarcity mindset that can be extremely toxic to your own mental health and well-being. Competition is totally constructed, but more on that in a future episode. And mindset totally matters. Arguably, it matters the most. I think if I could give myself one piece of advice looking back, it would be to start working on mindset and a growth mindset sooner. More on that in a future episode too. The fact that I'm not done developing all the skills that I'll develop, that there will always be new situations, that I'll always be in new situations with more and more responsibility and accountability to others and myself, That doesn't scare me or make me feel uncomfortable anymore or make me feel like an imposter. Maybe it would have years ago or if I'd labeled myself as an imposter. But now 
when that feeling that many would identify as discomfort arises, I know that something good, something big is on the horizon. And we never know exactly what or how it will turn out. But boy, do I want to find out. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.